extraterrestrial Morwin from Outlander explained. Some films give you satisfaction if you don't have any expectations, or even if you do, it should be pretty low. Horror sci-fi movies have always shown an affinity towards extraterrestrial beings. For decades, we have acknowledged a variety of aliens from filmmakers having the liberty of choosing their appearance. Directors like Steven Spielberg, Ridley Scott, James Cameron, John Carpenter, and others have set a milestone in alien movies. At the same time, most of the remaining films are mere permutations and combinations of these. The 2008 film Outlander tried to give a folkloristic appearance to the alien with quite a magnificent name, Morwin. Director Howard McCain had always been interested in Old English folklore, especially the classic poem Beowulf. McCain had always envisioned a movie version of Beowulf from 1992 and, following the trend, converted it to science fiction. Consequently, the leading antagonist of Beowulf, Grendel, had to be converted to an appropriate alien life form following the film. They named it Morwin, and Patrick Totopoulos eventually managed to design the desired creature. The Outlander picks up the story when a spacecraft crashed into Earth with two survivors. One of them was human-like, named Kanan, while the other was the dragon-like Morwin. The former alien was captured by Scandinavians and taken to a local village. Soon, his primary task was to eradicate the Morwin who had started its rampage in the local villages. Will he be able to ambush the creature who overpowered him and crashed the spacecraft? Let us find out from the story of Outlander, written by McCain and Dirk Blackman, starring Jim Caviezel, Sophia Miles, Jack Huston, Ron Perlman, and John Hurt. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. It destroyed his world. He won't let it destroy ours. Outlander, released in 2008. Can you guess the first scene of the movie? Well, it is the favorite opening scene of many alien movies. Okay now, you must have guessed it. A spacecraft was seen entering into the Earth's atmosphere, and this time it crashed into a lake in Scandinavia. Out of the two human-like creatures, one succumbed to his deadly injuries while the other retrieved the computer, which stated that he was on planet Earth. The computer successfully, but painfully, downloaded the local language and culture directly to his brain. He armed himself with a flare gun and carefully advanced through the woods till he reached a freshly devastated village. Suddenly, he was attacked by Wolfric, a warrior from a different village, and was taken as a prisoner to the village of King Hrothgar. King was seen in combat with his daughter Freya, as the king wanted her to get married to Wolfric, but Freya denied it. As Wolfric informed the king about the destroyed village, he seemed worried that the chieftain of the destroyed village, Gunnar, might assume that Wolfric had destroyed his village as Gunnar had murdered Wolfric's father. As Wolfric fiercely tortured the outlander, he stated his name to Kanan, approaching from the north while he was hunting a dragon. The people around him started laughing on hearing about the dragon. Kanan somehow managed to free himself and once again started hunting for the dragon-like creature. Soon, at night, a red bioluminescent light was seen in the village as many innocent and people were killed violently by the creature. As Kanan was interrogated, he revealed the secret of Morwen as a ruthless creature who devastated villages while hunting people and animals brutally. He asked them to take him along as they hunted for the creature. Thus, a group of men, including the king and Wolfric, set out in search of the creature. He told the king that the Morwen had rampaged his land just the way it was destroying his land. But while hunting for the creature, they were attacked by a giant bear. Kanan fought with his might, helping the other men slaughter the beast. With this effort, Kanan was heartily accepted by the king and his men as a viking, while he grew affectionate towards an orphan child, Eric. That night, Gunnar and his people attacked the village of Hrothgar, but were defeated as they retreated into the woods. At night, his men were ambushed by the Morwen as they ran for their lives towards Hrothgar's village. As they entered their boundaries for the first time, everyone saw the Morwen with their own eyes. And the first thing Boromir, one of Hrothgar's men, said, Now that is not a bear. Wolfric wanted to fight the Morwen, but Kanan warned them that it was too powerful for an open challenge. They needed to trap it in order to kill it. Kanan advised everyone to build a massive pit in front of the entrance gate and fill it up with whale oil. Kanan returned to his room and found Freya cooking for him. He could understand that Freya was getting attracted to him. He then narrated his story to Freya. He told her that he belonged to a planet where people looked for other lands for expansion, just like 
the people of Earth. Their search for land took them to the planet of the Morwins. They destroyed all the Morwins and built their colony, thinking it to be safe, and Kanan left for his next expedition, leaving his wife and son in the newly built colony. When he came back, he was too late to realize that one at Morwin had survived the mass killing and later destroyed the entire colony that was formed. Morwin hid in the spaceship of Kanan and caused him to crash on Earth. Freya gave him her family's sword and said that she was given the sword to hand it to a proper man. Kanan and Wolfric lured the Morwin to chase them while it fell into the pit, and the villagers set fire to it, but the people were astonished to find a baby Morwen attacking the women and children. Everyone rushed to their aid, but in the combat, King Hrothgar was killed. The adult Morwen also came out of the pit in a burning state and started its rampage as many people were killed, including Gunnar, who was decapitated by the Morwen's tail. Later, people started moving out of the village as Kanan, Freya, and Wolfric returned to the lake to retrieve fragments of metal from the ship to build stronger weapons. While Kanan was underwater, the monster attacked the boat and took Freya. Kanan and Wolfric returned to the village where metal fragments were converted to strong swords. Their team proceeded towards the Morwen's lair as Freya awakened on a pile of mutilated corpses. She was about to be slaughtered by the monster, but it was distracted by Kanan's hunting group. The young Morwen killed many people before Kanan blinded it with a newly formed sword. Kanan managed to slip one of the new swords to Freya as she killed the young Morwen with one final strike. Then, the adult Morwen attacked them at the exit of the cave, which ended in a a high waterfall. Wolfric was severely wounded and Kanan prepared himself for the final combat. Kanan and Freya managed to knock off the Morwen down the cliff, killing it finally. Kanan went back to the ship, bade goodbye to his wife in a coffin, and destroyed the computer that was sending a signal to the approaching spaceship as it retreated. Freya witnessed all the incidents and believed that Kanan was sent by God, but he had decided to stay back. Kanan performed the last rites for King Hrothgar and Wolfric. He then married Freya and adopted Eric as he became became their next king. This was an excellent movie in the true sense of the word. It is so disappointing to see the box office collection of this film. The fabulous set designs by Ian Gregg, costume designs by Deborah Hansen, the actors' performances, the background music, everything was perfect. The action-packed drama and thrill is bound to keep you glued to your seat. It should not matter what the critics say or the Rotten Tomatoes say, Outlander is an exceptionally well-executed and thoughtful film. The film has plenty of gore, with the Morwen murdering and feeding on the corpses while the climax was quite nerve-wracking. The characters were well-defined with respect to the timeline of the story. At early age, people were less complicated and broad-minded. It took one incident for the Vikings to accept Kanan into their tribe. When Wolfric was on his deathbed, he realized that Freya loves Kanan, but he never for once hesitated to declare Kanan as his friend and the next king. Such actions are rare nowadays. Bioluminescent Predators Morwen Explored The name Morwen is actually a twisted form of the term Morlock, which had been used by H.G. Wells in his classic all-time hit novel, The Time Machine, to demonstrate the savage humanoids of the future. McCain had given a dramatic name to the monster and assisted it with a historical background. It was the last surviving species of its planet where Kanan had exterminated the others in search of land for colonization. It is not known whether the Morwins were aggressive by nature or the extermination of their species due to mere greed of acquiring land and cruelty had turned them so violent. Keeping everything in mind, Tatopolis had researched drawings, tapestries, and sculptures depicting the Viking's dragon. As said by Tatopolis, I designed the Morwen as a mixture of a bull and a gorilla. The animal is able to run very fast, swim, climb trees, and do all this much faster than a human being because it moves on all fours. By contrast, when it hits its prey, it does so standing on two legs. The terrifying interlocking teeth were based on the crocodile. As mentioned earlier, McCain didn't want his alien to fall in the shadow of alien or predator, and wanted a backstory of his monster rather than exhibiting it simply as a killing machine. To highlight the tremendous power and strength of the Morwen, Tatopolis gave its shoulders, a broad chest, a thick neck, and a powerful, narrow hip. We had been introduced to the incredible power of the Morwins right from the beginning of the film when we saw the devastation it had created in Gunner's village. 
Now, we come to one of the significant features of the monster, which is the concept of bioluminescence. The idea of bioluminescence has been associated with many aliens in different sci-fi films. It is admirable that Tetopolis and his team had studied the footage of abysmal animals like cuttlefish and anglerfish to understand this predominant form of communication on Earth. That is how we saw that the Morwins illuminated one way when they were luring their prey and a different way when they were in an attacking mode. The audience had been kept in great suspense from the beginning as we only got glimpses of this aggressive monster. The sight of the Morwin standing in the dark and suddenly illuminated in red bioluminescent light to reveal itself gave quite a dramatic impact to its revelation. Kanan had admitted that they would never be able to combat the creature face to face out in the open, and under his supervision, the Morwin was trapped in a pit filled with whale oil and later set on fire. Such a destructive fire too, was unable to kill the alien though it was injured. The tough exoskeleton of the Morwen rendered all the weapons of Earth useless. Kanan realized this problem and he, Freya, and Wolfric brought different scraps of metals from his spaceship which were transformed into swords that were strong enough to penetrate the tough skin of the monster. The progeny of the Morwind was a twist in the plot. When everyone was waiting for the monster to be lured and fall into the trap, the young Morwind attacked from a well situated right in the heart of the village. Through the well, Kanan and the other hunters were able to reach the lair of the Morwind, where the audience was shocked to see the pile of decomposing corpses hunted by the two monsters. Another interesting feature of the Morwind was its bioluminescent green blood which was achieved nicely by the special effects coordinator Tony Kenny using safety light glow sticks. The computer generated model of the Morwind was created by digitally scanning the drawings of Tetopolis. A lot of effort was dedicated towards the motion and postures of the creature to attain perfection. Ultimately, McCain was delighted with the way the film and the creature effects turned out, but unfortunately, the movie was unable to receive the response it should have gained. Why should you watch Outlander? As I said before, if you watch Outlander without any expectations, you are bound to enjoy the film. Every aspect of the film, including the Viking village set, costumes, according to the timeline, have been created with a lot of care and dedication. A lot of dedicated research work for the creature effect deserves appreciation. It seems wrong to evaluate the quality of this film based on its unfortunately dismal box office collections. Moreover, if you are interested in Beowulf's story, then you might be excited to watch the sci-fi version of it. Also, if you are a fan of Predator, then you might like Outlander also. You cannot dump this film in as a terrible film. While you also cannot call it a great film, bound to leave a lasting impression on your mind. It is somewhere in the middle when you just like the film as everything about it is decent here. So, put the Outlander in the endless watch list that you have prepared. Don't let it land outside your mind. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.